Do you ever get a fright? All the time. At your own voice? Not in recent years. Because <laughs> I have a podcast and I have to edit it so I kind of know what it sounds like. But at the very start, do you know like when things... Do you ever, do, do you ever uh, record yourself singing? Because you know... <laughs> No, but my thing was I was I was in the car and you know the way older songs have like a totally different sound volume to newer songs, right? So you know that song One Sweet Day? One Sweet Day. You know Mariah Carey and Boys to Men. Yeah. But I didn't really <laughs> So I was driving out of John Drum and I was singing along. And I was like, hold on, why can I hear myself? You know the way Oh, it's... yeah, because it's not, there's not enough bass. Yeah, and I was like, hold on, why can I hear me? And I got the ick and I stopped singing. Ah! Hello and you are very welcome along to the Unpopular Opinion Podcast. My name is Gian. The way you said low. 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 Like a bleeding punter. It's real Brit, isn't it? Low. Hello. Hello. Low. Hello, hello, hello. Low over there. Um, I'm Carla. How are you? I am Jen. Uh, I'm good. Just a reminder that we're also on Patreon for extra little fix. For your extra fix, you're going to get five episodes a month. You're going to get them for six euros. One extra episode out every Monday. I, I'm i going to put this out there because I've been talking to some of our um, patrons about this. Right. But I'm not going to do a book club. Okay. I'm going to do a I'm reading this. Anybody else? Oh, nice. And we all have a chat. Yeah, I'll have a little chat. Do you know? Very good. Um, just kind of more is it because, you know, with the book club and then I could get busy and not read a book for another month. Do you know <laughs> In case, yeah. And then kind of pop back in. You don't want to commit too much. That's it, yeah. I won't be committing too much. So too much. I was chatting with a couple of our patrons because we'd spoken about it a few times before and I was like, do you know what? We're going to do a book club but not a book club. It's going to be like, I'm reading this. Anybody else? Yeah. Any Anything good? Right, yeah. You know, we'll have a little chat. I'm like, good. oh yeah, I never thought of that. Yeah, and so, little recos and stuff like little, that. Right, just a, few little just a little, a bit, few bits good. and bobs. Yeah, we're always talking about stuff that we'll do over there. Uh, predictions, actually. I thought I won during the week. So, prediction. We're going to make this a, a, an official slot in the Patreon, but I'll just tell you this one because it came up during the week. So, it was my dad's... Me, Bobby and me dad's birthday are exactly six months apart. They're both the 19th, yeah. May, May and November. Yeah. So, when I was sorting out my dad's birthday stuff, I was like, oh, it's Bobby's half birthday. And I was like, I bet you in a few years, half birthdays are going to be You're going to start celebrating them. Yeah. There's going to be... I, I would imagine it's already out there. Hallmark cards already have a half birthday. Well, we're celebrating babies every week now, aren't we? Like two weeks, seven weeks, and they keep getting oh, them things. They lie them down and, and they the blanket. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like two weeks. Oh, my little, I can't believe two weeks ago. And then it's like, I can't believe two we- two months and two weeks ago. I can't believe yeah. 35 weeks ago. <laughs> Particularly up to the six month mark, and then they go back to work, and then they fucking forget about it. Like. <laughs> After that. I did. I took, no, I took the pictures every month. I didn't um, post them, though. I don't think. No, I didn't. No, I don't I don't think Instagram needs to particularly see your baby grow. No. I don't think so. No. That's kind of just for him when he grows up. Kind of for you that. also like, to be like, wow, miraculous. Yeah, but it's like cute. I don't know if it's for strangers on the internet. No, I don't think so either. Yeah. Not, no, do it if you want. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I, I understand, but Yeah. I just know why I didn't. Yeah. Do you know? <laughs> How fucking <laughs> How bitchy was that? I just know why I, I didn't. <laughs> Jen's like, I just know I'm better than you. <laughs> <laughs> not to um, not to talk come here. what's going on with fucking Liam Payne we have a serious gripe with Liam Payne we've done plenty about him on it's Patreon just because he's fucking and I feel like he's just getting worse ever since we started talking about him well it's not a gripe so me and Jen have this weird manis- manifestation power but for nothing good yeah, for nothing relevant. Mm-hmm. It's like we'll talk about something, then all of a sudden, They're in it's the media here constantly, and it's in the media. It's yeah. very, very strange. Um, but Liam Payne, we ended up trying to do an episode on One Direction, and we were doing uh, it was the bands, band breakups. Yeah, and we ended up trying to do one each, and then I started on One Direction, and we just had so many questions that the whole thing just kind of became about Liam Payne because I didn't realize. How much he's been in the media without anyone knowing. Yeah. 
he he said some pretty condescending things about Harry Styles. Harry Styles and I just feel like the neck of him yeah for, but I he, also, for who he is what he does uh, like his kind of for his music <laughs> for his level of music for his biography in comparison to yeah. like Harry Styles is up here I know this is not visual my hand is up in the air and Liam Payne is down here listener my hand is on the table yeah. like it's, <laughs> yeah. just, it's a massive fucking difference and I was quite Quite, um, I suppose, like, curious when I came in because I was like, come here, we need to talk about Liam Payne because obviously during the week it came out that he was very publicly cheating on his... Fiancé. On his ma. His very young fiancé. Yeah. But, no, so what uh, we know about Liam Payne... But I wanted to know what the net, work, net worth was. So yeah. he's, his net worth... Now, he sold a couple of gaffes during a penny G. Did he? Did he have gaffes? He had Where's gaffes. he from? I... Find that out. Which don't actually know. Now, to be fair, it's actually not that much of a difference. So Liam Payne's net worth is forty-seven million. That's a lot. And then Harry Styles is a seventy-five, which I'm. But all surprised. <laughs> huh? I suppose it depends on what you invest in, isn't but it? But also, net net worth is very hard to. Yeah, like you don't have forty-seven million euro in your bank. No. Like, yeah. But do you remember what I was saying to you? I feel like boy banders make their money after the boy band. It's like when they're in the boy band, they're under such strict contracts and scrutiny and all this other horse shite. And they're splitting a five ways. <laughs> and they're splitting a five ways. Yeah, exactly. But also they're, they're splitting a five halves. ways, and they've to you know when people they always say artists don't make real money until they're on tour. Because yeah, everything yeah. else is like a front by the record company or they're given X, Y and Z allowance for studio time that has to be booked off and then their manager has to take a cut and then they're mm. uh, like everybody has to get paid. Yeah, of course. Like every single person has to get paid. So they don't really start making money until they're out there on tour because record sales aren't really a thing anymore yeah. and all that other stuff. So with Liam, I know he's spoken on Stephen's podcast, we all know Stephen now. He's really coming up in the world. That bloke who does that podcast, um, what's it called? Uh, Secrets of an Entrepreneur, or something. A CEO, or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, and he does. He certainly does interviews. <laughs> pass any other Are they very long? Like they're very inspirational, aspirational. They're very curated. I get it. I'm not into it. It's not something that I would listen to, so I kind of have to look at it all. Does a lot of clickbaity stuff. Is this the it's same? It's very clickbaity. Is this I the would one that um, Molly made? Molly made it. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And he's done. But there is other ones that I'm like, oh, that looks good. I'm not going to listen to it. But that. Look- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Happy for you though. He's getting good guests. Like yeah, he he gets he secures really good guests. So that's fine. So I saw Liam was on it, mm. and they were obviously talking about the success of One Direction, and it's all like, you know, when he does the teaser promos, it's like, dum dum. It's like you had millions of fans, and then it's like. Live while we're young. And then it's like, doo-doo. and then it's like, and then you have an addiction issue. <laughs> you know, this oh, and then it's like a clip of him being like, I remember, you know, what do you do when you're locked in a hotel room? You go to the mini bar. What do you do? What do you do when you got to do? What do you got to do? <laughs> and, you know, this all very kind of sensationalized and being like, yeah, Liam Payne launches on Thursday morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Set your notification. Yeah. Subscribe now. Girl. Oh, no, no. <laughs> you know? Have we ever told anybody to subscribe to this podcast? I don't think we have. Subscribe. subscribe. <laughs> Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Hey. Um, but yeah, so he kind of said that he had, he'd been sober. He'd been not sober for a good bit of his life, particularly when he was, when he was in the band. And at that point when he had done the Stephen interview, he was sober again. So when obviously was this? Because he's fucking definitely not sober. Yeah, here. but that's what people are saying. They're like, he's had a relapse. And I'm like, yeah, well, it's it's definitely, it's He's definitely on his right re- mind. He, well, he, he's he's relapsed, you know? So it's yeah. like, it's not, it's not nice to watch. No. It's car crash to watch, but it's also... It's been sensationalised by a lot of media as well, though. Yeah, it's just, for me, it's strange because I didn't realise that he had any addiction issues until the Stephen podcast. Yeah. And then he kind of spoke about his alcohol alcoholism, but wasn't alcoholism. It was more like binge drinking. And then we had obviously the Oscars. So he's kind of thrust it back into everybody's eyes again with the Oscars when you got to do what you got to do. When you got to do what you got to do. And he I used to live behind Will Smith. And he did his famous um, speech. <laughs> what would you like to call it? Like, it wasn't an interview. His tell-all um, opinion, I guess. Yeah, his tell-all opinion. His, his tell-all. okay exclusive. His tell-all opinion. Yeah, yeah. And Good Morning Britain. And, and the rest, and the likes. Yeah. Um, 
So now he's been acting. It started with Instagram and Snapchat, which funny enough, this episode is all about. Oh, yeah. But he had on his Snapchat quite publicly that he was cheating on his fiance. So he was wearing the face off some birds um, and people kept tagging his fiance in the comments. Because that, mm. obviously, anything goes up on Snapchat, guess what? It ends up on Instagram pretty yeah. much directly afterwards. So then she put out a comment being like, it's bad enough that I have to watch him do this. Do you mind stop fucking tagging me? I'm well aware he's cheating on me. And then everybody was like, because <gasps> yeah. I think everybody just assumed that they were off and then he was out sowing the wild oats all over again. Yeah. And it, well, it, yeah, it was quite, um, it was like, oh my God, this is the tea we asked for and this is the tea that we got. Because yeah. it's usually yeah. not, that's usually <laughs> yeah. not the case. It's yeah. usually like, yeah, we have, uh, we have, we separated like three weeks ago. Or, you know what I mean? It yeah. always comes out that there's no actual tea there. So to see that happening, it was like, holy fuck. Like, yeah. Jesus. Oh, no, I didn't expect that. <laughs> wow. <Well, laughs> you're like, whoa. Well, Jesus, I asked for that and I got it. Yeah. Well, you're like, I was you know. for light gossip and I got heavy gossip. Yeah. yeah. So the dopamine was here. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the clickbait was clicked. Yeah. But, um, so... That happened now ever, not ever since that, for the past, I want to say. the chopper is out. The chopper. We live live inside the K. (laughs) So since that Oscar interview, it's kind of, he's not really stopped. He's doing the track with Steve. Oh no, he's really fucking tearing the arse out of it. Tearing the arse out of it. He has his own Revolut card. He does. Which we know. We're thrilled Um, from. We're thrilled from. And He's he's getting loads of birthday gigs. Getting a ton of birthday gigs. He's got a track coming out with Steve Aoki. I love Steve Aoki. He's he's a forgotten gem. He is, but I, th- the weird thing about Liam is I feel like Liam's adapting to the personalities of the people around him. He's adapting to the personality that people are... Like, because people are obviously talking shit about him. They're tweeting about him saying how fucking ridiculous he is. But he's playing up to that and he's loving it. It's, it's, it's strange to me because I'm like, I'm watching it. When he was on the Oscars carpet, he was being interviewed and he was trying to be like, I'm being interviewed right now and it's very important and yeah. also, you know, Will and Ajayda and all this mad <laughs> stuff, right? <laughs> it was fucking mental. <laughs> that was Jamaican and South African. That's, that's, that, that was it. it. Yeah. That was his accent. A little bit of Welsh. Do what you got to know. Yeah. You got to know. <laughs> And it was like when he was in that kind of realm, he was like, "Oh, I'm, I'm being interviewed. I'm a gentleman." Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. And now he's like with Steve Aoki, his tops off, oh, and he's like stop, jumping yeah. around the stage because obviously Steve Aoki's quite famous for getting the birthday cake, shoving it in people's face, or cake in general, shoving it in people's face, being mad on the stage, mm. jumping around. And you see him, he's like, "Yeah." I'm jumping around. And there was Instagram Instagram story last night. He put up, oh man. This is Wednesday. By the time we are, when you hear this, we're recording this on Wednesday. Yeah. He put up, not a Snapchat, he put up an Instagram of him with his top off, sunglasses on, being like, like making making signs, you know, like I don't, they're not Wait, gang signs, but they were like, you know, like ye yeah, brother, yeah, <laughs> like, like London kind of thing, oh, being like rock and roller, you know that film, yeah, Guy Ritchie. I think it's Guy Ritchie film, and it's got um Idris Elba and sounds good. I've never seen it. Yeah, <laughs> Chair Butler and yeah. all them. It's actually it was, it was two thousand and eight or two thousand and nine because right. one of our listeners told me. Okay, and she was like, "Have you not seen it? It's an epic film, but what is this?" So I was like, "Yeah," and he's like, "Got the sunglasses on." He's like mouthing along to some of the to some of the sound bites from it. Oh god, fucking so weird! Just really strange. Like, he goes on live on TikTok as well, doesn't he? Yeah, he absolutely does. That's when he did the bedroom floor. Oh god, he was like, "Oh, you want me to sing a few notes?" He said, "What's up?" Oh God! He was like, "Thanks." <laughs> do, do you think he's good looking? He's yeah, he's definitely. Attractive. I think he is. Yeah, he's yeah. gorgeous, and I think I do feel bad for people that have been in boy bands because your identity is always going to be the boy band unless you can be a Harry Styles, unless yeah. you can find your niche. Yeah, definitely. You know, you're either a Jerry or a posh or a scary or you know that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And I feel like nowadays, all anyone wants to do is pit everyone against each other. Yeah, and I feel like when Liam came out. He went down the pop route, but tried to get like a load of rappers in and tried to try to make really current pop music, but kind of soulless current pop music. Yeah, absolutely. Like not 
interesting new different pop music he went along he with went, exactly what was popular enough to hit the top 10 but he never did the, the number stuff one. that he knew yeah. worked it's tried and tested it's it was lazy know, work uninteresting uninteresting and a little bit lazy i feel mm-hmm. you know and i've talked about this if you're into any of this we did the whole episode on patreon we talked about each of the lads yeah their and whole thing Liam's their whole career. opinions on each and every one of them and Liam for some reason had an opinion on each and every one of them every single fucking article that I looked up was like Liam Payne has said X about Niall Liam Payne has said Y about uh, Louis you know it was yeah, yeah. absolutely insane but with him he kind of went down that route and then it didn't really work as I said it was hitting top 10 and then it was hitting top 20 and then it was top 50 and it kind of slowly mm-hmm. went along that route his relevancy was a lot to do with his relationship too with Cheryl Shut Cole up, yeah. and them having a baby and everybody was delighted for them. But say what you will, he will always be protected by quote unquote directioners. He will, yeah. Because yeah. they are going aka on Twitter mm-hmm. to anybody who says anything in any way, shape or form that could be mildly insult- insult- insulting about Lee. So we're fucked is what you're saying. If They, they might this. find this podcast and if they do, good for you. Good for you. I'm ready for the heat. Yeah. Be ready for it. Yeah. So yeah, that's the whole lean thing. It was a weird week. It's developing still. A girl put up earlier that he was um, asking for her snap. Oh God. And he was like, hey, what's your snap? Send me your snap. Mm. And he was like, he said something like, I'm dumb. Mm. So you'll have to send it to me again or explain it to me. And then she like clicked in to make, so people could see that it was him. So she clicked in, like went through his profile. It's his profile. That's messaging her. So it's not just like a screen grab. It's like her actively messaging and yeah, then clicked into yeah. it and then went through it and was like, this is actually Liam Payne. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. So he's on, he's on a wild one. The girlfriend, the fiance, the ex fiance, the jilted mm-hmm. lover, shall we say. Yes. Um, he got a lot of heat because he started dating her when she was 19. He was 27. Right. Um, people were kind of like, yo man. And then he got engaged her, I think within six months, really, really quickly. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, and I think he came out being like, what's the problem? What's the issue? And everyone was like, you're nearly 10 years older than her and she's a teenager. That's sorry, sorry it, were people fucking surprised? He was with Cheryl. Yeah, but it went... How is it so... How is it so different, like? Oh, no, people went mad at Cheryl, Oh, too. no, I know that. But, like, I don't... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. the only thing I remember because as far as I was aware, he was with Cheryl and then he was... So this episode is all about Snapchat. Yeah. You, you were a Snapchat star. I was a snapper. You were a Snapchat star. I was a snapper. Um, I don't know if I was a Snapchat star. Actually, you yeah. You were. Me following was quite... Uh, an Irish, it's sorry. An Irish Snapchat it's star. It's just me, yeah. Um, it's... I suppose, yeah, me following was... I suppose, like, when I went to Instagram, I built a following quick enough because of Snapchat, yeah. I suppose. Like, yeah. You now, it's always been kind of level. I haven't been through the fucking stratosphere or anything like that. But I did... Like, I used to... That's how I started my whole online sketch comedy Business. <laughs> it's how I started. No, like, I thought you did f- uh, videos on Facebook first, no? They were from Snapchat. Fuck off. Because they were Snapchat filters, yeah. Jacinta was the no Snapchat filter. No yeah. I thought you were doing little mini sketches on Facebook and then you adapted, shall we say, to nope. Snapchat. Nope. So on Snapchat, they had the filters and they did the Jacinta thing. Now, I used to do... God, I fucking... They're probably on the internet somewhere. Like, just stupid things when I was bored in my bedroom and then uploaded them to Snapchat and then I'd do a compilation of like this week on Snapchat on my personal Facebook like I, it was never for public do you know what I mean my yeah. Facebook was private or whatever um, and then I did one with the, the filters did just into Michael thing and then my sister was like I don't this is when, when people wrote on your wall on Facebook oh I miss it and she wrote on my wall and she was like that video was so fucking funny Keith, who's my brother and all her husband, spit his curry out or something like that. And then my auntie commented underneath because she wasn't on Snapchat. She was like, put it up on Facebook. So I put it up on Facebook and for some reason, oh, maybe it was because people were trying to share it and my thing was on private. Somebody told me to take it off private or whatever and I took it off private and I hit like 90k views. Oh my God. And it was like, that was big, you know, for the start of kind of sketch comedy, really. Like the only yeah. other people that I saw... About where, like, the wind up merchants were around years. So was Darren Conway, obviously, and uh, Annie Martin and like Rory Stories. They were kind of the only ones that I followed or that I knew of. Yeah. Um, and it was around that time. And then, yeah, I just kept going. 
And then, do you know what was more so? Because um, I didn't follow anybody on Snapchat. It was just me mates yeah. from school and stuff like that. And my sister told me to follow Claire Baldwin. Oh. And I started following Claire Baldwin. And it was like, I was following her a good few weeks. And then uh, I was just, I don't know. I don't, I wasn't copying her. But I just noticed the more people that she mentioned, I know it was the more people were doing it, just kind of talking into the phone. You know, like the way we yeah. do on stories yeah. and stuff like that. So a couple of, I'd say, weeks or months later, I just kind of did it. And then it kind of went from there. Yeah. Got a shout out from uh, Good Old Claire and Bloggers Unveiled and uh, the rest is history. And off you went. Off I fucking went. Cruise. But it went shy, obviously, yeah. when they updated the thing. Yeah. Loads of people left. I know. And I was talking about this with Lindsay on Monday night because she was like, oh, what do you think's next? And I was like, well, Instagram's dying to death. Yeah. And it's just a shop and a DIY. Well, my algorithm for sure. Yeah. It doesn't have to be this way, but they're letting it because they're trying to take the best features out of every good platform yeah. and shove it into theirs instead of just doing what people want them to do. Yeah. It's just yeah. being primarily like a photo and video sharing yeah. platform. And like, it used to be all about... See, what I always noticed was Snapchat was always the fucking random... Like, I remember going through people's Snapchat stories and it was nothing but pictures of, like, days out, kids at the park. And I never understood it when people put up sentimental photos on Snapchat because I was just like, there you go, missing 24 hours later. Like, be, go onto Instagram. Stop fucking... You know what I mean? You're on the wrong app. You know when people put up a Facebook status and it's only, like, one line long, it's punchy, it's funny, no reaction. That's because that's a tweet hun. Yeah. Get off Facebook. <laughs> so when people were putting up Instagram style Snapchats, I was like, that's a fucking Instagram. Get yeah. on. You know what yeah. I mean? Like there's, there's a place there's, for you. It's not there's here. There's specific apps for specific reasons. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And Snapchat to used to be the storytelling app until Instagram yeah. got their stories. And it's so funny because when you Google Snapchat, it's like why Snapchat will forever be known as like the best social media platform 2016. <laughs> Article yeah, day to 2016. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah. that's when you fell from a height. Yeah. Um so with Snapchat, I never used Snapchat as a public yeah, figure. For, um, it was always my private thing. Mm -hmm. But I think I remember using the minute that Instagram everyone was very cautious to use Instagram stories because they didn't think it would work but it would it would it would translate and then i remember i used instagram stories because i didn't give a fuck because mm. i was like at this point i might as well use them yeah yeah i used to put up makeup things or whatever else like that but to be honest i didn't i didn't start using instagram stories for like get ready with me and makeup or any of that i just started talking joy yeah yeah and putting up more of my it was weird it was like i used instagram stories as my snapchat before people when people were using snapchat I was you were Instagram better than everyone, is no, that what you're saying? No, I was. No, I did it backwards. <laughs> I should have been fucking utilizing and trying to get an audience up on Do you know? Yeah, it, but this is the thing about Snapchat. It was so weird that people had big followings on it because the only before it got updated, before there was any sort of discovery page, it was the most anonymous, anonymous, anonymous fucking social media platform that yeah. there was. Because there was you, no engaging. There was no engagement. There was yeah. no discover page. You would need to know somebody's username down to the capital letters yeah. to be able to follow somebody. Yeah. You couldn't just be like, I no. want to find Jen that, Hatton. And that's why shout outs it. were so... Important, because you could click yes. on the tag. I remember you could click on the tag and add no, the post. No, you couldn't. Could you not? Not at the start. No you way. had to search it. But that's what I mean, down to the capital letter and the, the full stop. You had to. And then... Even when you added them, if they didn't have a story up, you weren't sure if you were following them. This is before they started adding any of that kind of handy stuff because they initially, that's what it was like. Somebody would type it on, you know, the little bar. And then you oh had to God. come and out. The bar would come up and you'd be like... <laughs> yeah, no, like the text bar. That's the way, the only way you could put text on it. Before you could even put like big writing on it, it was just a bar. And that's the only thing you could text in. So you had to come out the person's story, go into your little search thing, add them. If they didn't have a story up... You just had to wait and see. Yeah. And then they updated it that you got these like snap codes. Do you remember? That's when yeah. the ghost came up and that's when the tags came up and you could start. Then they had the swipe ups. Uh, I think everybody, did everybody have a swipe up or did you need 10K? No, that was Instagram. No, I think everybody had a swipe up. Yeah. Um, And then they started using the, remember the, the map? Oh yeah. I never had that on. The map. I think that's when they started to go downhill. Was the map. Well, when the, 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 why they ended up fucked is because the way it used to be is the person who had updated their story. It was like the a chat. quickest you'd be able to look at. And it was like a chat kind of thing. 
but then they moved it all they put in all these adverse things yeah and then it was whoever is the most prolific person plus people that you didn't follow that they decided were celebrities were just shoved onto your home so, screen and that's when it all went tits up because instead of like me watching jen and watching claire on snapchat I was getting DJ Khaled and Kylie Jenner shoved in my throat. Yeah. So they used it when you went on Snapchat and because there was no Discover page, your, the people that you were following came on in like a list. Yeah, exactly. It was like a chat. It and was you like your DMs. Them. And you could just scroll down. It was just an up and, and down. Yeah. And click. Like an whoever address you were following. Wasn't it? That's yeah. all it was. Yeah. Then they introduced the Discover page and then the stories went like little, exactly like the way Instagram stories yeah. are now. Yeah. But people don't fucking like it. Now, I did go on it the other day because... I'm going to say the Snapchat filters, even in comparison to TikTok, they fucking slap. Like, Do they? They're, oh, they're brilliant. Like, they, they used to Funny only or be like what way? fucking hilarious. Like, some of the ones, and you just can't get them on other apps. And you might see videos on TikTok where you're like, where the fuck is that filter? Like, what's it called? You know, all that kind of thing. And it's a, that's a Snapchat filter. It's when very you hard to, to find a um, filter on TikTok or Instagram, by the way. Oh, yeah, they're very hard. They're not user friendly. Yeah. Whereas the Snapchats really come on with their filters and you can search for them and you can save them. And anyone that's ever been on there, like I remember, um, do, you want, do you know Laura Cleary, the American sketch artist? And she's like, um, remember she used to be like, Steven, you know her, the blonde one. And she does like Pamela Pupkin and all that. You'd know her if I sh- showed you her face, but she had one and she did that character and it was like, Steven. And it was all just these innuendo jokes that she did, but it was really popular. But she got onto Snapchat because they used to expire. Oh, the, yeah, the sorry, filters, yeah, you couldn't yeah, yeah. use them, you all, couldn't the use them all the time. Yeah. yeah, if you didn't want it. And that's why the Jacinta one, I had to stop doing it because the filter just fucking went off yeah. the face of the earth. Yeah, I do remember that. But somebody had asked Laura Cleary, because I remember saying this on our Snapchat stories, they were like, how are you able to use that filter all the fucking time? Like, it's expired, it's not there. Yeah. And I know it was different for like different algorithms, different countries, different time zones and stuff like that. Because I would have, sometimes I'd have the Jacinta filter at 7.45 and it'd be gone by 8. Like that's how not a Cinderella quick. moment. For yeah, the that's filter. how because I'd be in the middle of a video. Like I'd be, you know, after getting yeah. up in the morning, up in, when I lived in Summer Hill, like trying to get it done, whatever the sit- situation was, and it'd be gone. And I'd be fuming. And I remember her saying, "Oh no, I got onto Snapchat and I told them." Look, I'll fucking pay us for this thing. And then yeah. they just instated it on her profile. They could do it for her because she had like a blue tick. I don't know. Yeah. They, they just gave her like special treatment or whatever. Or maybe she had an agent that, that did stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's the way it used to be. It used to be just like so. It's, it, and, and to be honest, when you got onto Snapchat now, after having a break and not remembering all of those things about the good old Snapchat days, it's kind of not a bad app to use, but it's just, it's gone off. It. Nobody uses it anymore. We're used to using Instagram and Instagram got so complicated that we all got so used to it because everything was on Instagram. Whether it's with Snap, it wasn't there yet it for it simple. to decide to change yeah. its whole thing. And what I thought was great about Snapchat was it was really accessible because it was so easy to use because yeah. it was like a contact book yeah, and you just find your person alphabetically. Click on and that it, thing. It wasn't and shoving story. shit down your face. And it wasn't either. shoving shit down your face. And then they fucked it. Yeah. Everybody then migrated over to Instagram. But I do remember Claire in particular was like, I'm never going to Instagram. I'm never <laughs> even going to Instagram. I'm never going to Instagram. And then all of a sudden, guess who's on fucking Instagram? No First talk. day she joined, she had like 50,000 followers. I know, yeah. See, <laughs> I, I was like, well, well, well. I was kind of the same with Instagram in that I had an Instagram before. I migrated over. Yeah. So I just used that and I, I think I changed the username maybe. Um and then that's when I just but I had to update Snapchat like loads of times because people were DMing me saying like how where are you? Like why aren't you on Snapchat? Yeah. And I'm like, oh I'm on Instagram because like I went so shit. Yeah. Do you know? Yeah, and that's I think everybody ended up migrating over. Yeah. But the but like Ty, I went on the other day to use a filter and Ty Fleming is still posting Fly. on it. James Patrice still posts on it. they probably it. have like, massive followings that are still engaged yeah. and they're still sitting and watching. Yeah. Like there is, it is a young per. I feel now it's a young person's texting app. I think so. Yeah, it's kind Ca- of rebranded it, loads yeah. of times. I feel like, I feel like a lot of people are using it now for like OnlyFans stuff, nudes and then texting. Yeah, well it was the OG nudes app. Yeah, because... Know if someone screenshotted and all that other kind of stuff. Yeah, it was a quick. 
is a quick 10 seconds Snap- was it 10 seconds Snapchat was the reason why I get 20 DMs a day on Instagram saying sorry I didn't mean to screenshot that was my four year old yeah we don't get notifications that <laughs> we do no, not we I know we people don't. always say it and I'm like it's absolutely I don't as far, the only two apps that I know of that notify people if you screenshot mm-hmm. it is Snapchat and Raya and that's it what's Raya Raya is a celeb only dating app and if you screenshot somebody's thing, they get notified and you get blocked. I saw an, an article about Joanne McNally, actually. She got blocked off because she screenshotted uh, a load of profiles and sent it to the girls' chat. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I think she's back on it now. She's not meeting a bloke off it. Oh, good for her. Yeah, she's dying. Dying, good for her. Dying. Yeah, no, it was... There was also the kind of leaders, like I feel like Kylie Jenner was one of those kind of industry leaders who used Snapchat all of the time and she mm. really built up her following from that because everybody was excited to see when she got her nails done. Everybody was obsessing. And, and it what, was in real time. What colour her Lambo was. Oh yeah, because I remember, remember the there Lambo being, wraps? no but I remember there being a big thing on one of the episodes and it was like, I have had to tell Kylie to turn off her location. On Snapchat. Yeah. Because people keep showing up to our fucking house. <laughs> and it was like, you don't really get it. But she was obviously of that age too. Yeah, that's and true. And she was like mm-hmm. an icon. Do the messages still disappear? As far yeah, as I- they do. They do. But I think you can now swipe up to save. There's oh, something. Here. I thought <clears throat> that the chat, like the like the actual conversational chat state, there was it. Oh, yeah. You t- sorry, you, ho- you long hold it. And it stays. Yeah. As far as, well, that's what it was back in 2K16. But there was a lot of people who kind of gained their, who gained their follow, like not gained yeah. their following, but definitely maximised their following on Snapchat. Yeah. Um, another one was DJ Khaled. I can't say. Oh, he, he was wild. Was he? Yeah, it was him in his Miami mansion on a jet ski all of the time, snapping on a jet ski, being like, live life. Yeah. Be a tiger and all this mad stuff and just all these quotes. He'd just like get on and just be talking about mad quotes and right. how rich he was. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that was kind of his thing. Um, Christy Teigen also, she, she built. I yeah, remember, yes. She built up a lot. Um, her username was funny enough, Christy Teigen. Yeah. Um, she did a lot of sharing her daily life, sharing the kids, sharing John Legend. And everybody was like, wow, there's John Legend just having a bowl of soup. Yeah. <laughs> On. Yeah, I think it was. Do you know what it was? And another phenomenon was kind of Twitter in that, like, celebrities were actually writing these things in real time, and you felt it felt like you had more access to them. So that this was the kind of video version of that, yeah. Because you'd see that. I remember it used to be that there was like a countdown, and you'd see how many minutes were left in a thing. It's only an hour left. Go and watch it now. Yeah. yeah. Or not yet. Yeah, only an hour left. Or you'd have the countdown of how long this. The story was yeah until it turned into little blips at the top of the screen yeah and um, it used to be like a timer it's like it started like some of them especially if you saw it went on to one of the girls i was on a night out and it was like 300 seconds long or something but i think oh, yeah. it was the <laughs> fact that like say chrissy teigen for it for example posted this like two minutes ago it's like that's what she's doing right now yeah do you know it's just mad you're like, I'm touching a celeb. Yeah. Uh, Kim Kardashian. <laughs> I've licked her face. Kim Kardashian was notorious for using the filters. Oh, yeah. She loved them. Yeah. She'd be on them all the time. Serena Williams. I feel like Snapchat definitely really, well, Instagram bit had a massive part to play in it, but Snapchat filters really, that fucking dog. Fucking dog. With the tongue. I have so many of them. Seriously. Do you remember every time you'd open your mouth, the tongue would go and a lick and it would be like, yeah, and uh, it was so, and you'd be like, no, stop, I look cute. Yeah. Yeah, that one, the cat filter. There were so many. There was only eight filters, though, I remember at one time. And the dog one always stuck around because everybody used it. Cause it, it was, was the like, most popular one. Yeah, because yeah, it was, I don't know why. I think it's because it like, smoothed your face. But every time I go onto Snapchat and I have a look at the filters, it makes me look like a Martian. Yeah. There was this really weird pinched thing with your nose and my eyes always go real like I always much prefer Disney the, the fucking hilarious ones. Yeah, there there is some very funny ones. I will say that I there is some them. there is some funny ones. Yeah, um, Spencer Pratt also. Yes, no, I was going to yeah, say him and Heidi, yeah, him, him and his and crystals, Heidi. yeah, and his hummingbirds, yeah, and his spiritual ways. Yeah, he used to like love going mad captions. Yeah, he'd go to Vegas a lot. He just he was was he selling crystals or like just dis- distributing them? Yeah, he was definitely 
Dealing crystals. He was doing some crazy stuff. The Rock. Yeah. I he used Snapchat say. a lot. Yeah. Okay. Um, Gucci Mane. It just kind of became. Yeah. It was big. It was big. Um, but yeah, I do in particular remember Miss Kylie. Miss Kylie Jenna. Miss Kylie. Um, top friends. Best friends. Oh, the best friends. That the caused courage. a lot of uh, drama. I've talked about it many times, especially if you're texting a guy or dating a guy or trying to date a guy or t- t- talking stages with a guy. You could see yeah. who his top friends were and they were always girls. Your uh, fucking, your streak, wasn't it? Yeah. Didn't you have a streak and then your favorites. score? If you had the uh, yellow heart, it would be a favorite. They'd yeah. be in your top three favorites. If you had, and then your best, yeah, yeah. So your best friends were the, like three most engaged with people. And then wasn't there a score beside it? A, sc- a snap score? No, yeah. you had your own snap score. I think the more you did, the more you, the more you got. got I never understood the scoring system. Yeah, there you go. So did you know that the Snapchat logo, it's not a ghost? Huh? <gasps> Do you not know this? No. Oh, this is amazing. The Snapchat logo is not a ghost. It is. It's a wet wipe. Because it used to be a wanking app for nudes. And that's what? what it stood for, yeah. No. It, yes. That's, well, I, now... I could be, they probably soft launched like a, a one that looks more like a ghost, but it was definitely, a, well, that's the myth. It's the myth. It was a wet wipe. I've never For heard wa- that before. <laughs> Wiping off your chest. So we asked you guys. For some of your uh, Snapchat stories or some of your Snapchat memories, I suppose. Um, I've got a long one here. I'll open with the longest. I'll go for it. So Snapchat woes. The boyfriend was working away at the time. I was on my own for the weekend one Friday night and decided to do my tan. Um, live out the country, so getting kind of naked, putting on tan was grand because nobody was around. Getting kind of naked? Getting kind of Well, you know, top off probably. Yeah. Half naked. Uh, sitting on my counter and I was chatting to my boyfriend through WhatsApp while putting on my tan. At the time I was working out loads and when I was moving the mitt down my arm, my mirror was showing me some serious shoulder definition and I was delighted with it. So we all know Snapchat adds a filter to a picture, so I took a photo of the shoulder to send to the boyfriend. I had no makeup on my face, so I put an emoji over it, but of course there was a book in there. Um, there was a book in there that I took no notice of. On it, I wrote, check out my shoulder definition, and I hit the save button to send her the picture via WhatsApp. Cue five minutes later, and a girl in work calls me. A girl that never calls me, so I assumed straight away oh, that somebody was dead. Fuck. I answered the phone to which she replied, Em, did you mean to ask to add that picture to your Snapchat story? My arse fell out of me. I was like, what the fuck? No, hang up, hang up, hang up. Went to delete. Fo- went to delete. <gasps> I went to delete the photo, and my battery died. Oh no! Oh Jesus Christ! Because <laughs> you couldn't make this up. Like definitely eight minutes. That picture is on my story. By the time I turned my phone back on and deleted it, I remember um one. Of the, I actually used to work with this girl. She was like, I remember one of the girls from Liffey Valley texting me about it. Sweet Jesus, this was a big lesson learned. Oh God! And I do remember back in the day, so. Snapchat used to age your fucking battery. A Oh yes, it did. You'd be like, oh, for, f- for fuck's sake. <laughs> and like, batteries weren't like they. They're not what they are now. Do you know what I mean? Like, they're. I feel like they've definitely come on now. They're not the best. But Snapchat used to definitely eat the fucking arse out of your battery. Imagine it was up there and your. You couldn't write that that your battery died. Oh god. At the same time. And do you know sometimes, right? Yeah. When you. Sometimes when you plug your phone in, it comes straight back on. And sometimes it's like, no. <laughs> it doesn't come on for no. about an hour. No. And it always feels like that's the worst time that it could happen because there's definitely something on there that you need to get done. Yeah, you're you like, come on, come on, come on. And it's like, nah. No, I'm good. I'm ha- need a nap. You've good been using bro. me an awful lot, long time. Like, you know? Good bro, I'm good. You know? Um. Oh, sorry, this is... Uh, <laughs> Oh, Reese, Reese Creed, friend of the pod. He's uh, the DM and us all the stuff about Liam Payne. Yeah, he's, he's really on it with Liam Payne. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a great narc. Yeah, he's a great narc. Thank you. He's a good narc. Yeah. Um, this isn't a box, is it? Sorry, I'm, I'm just, just had to go listen to say what's going in, on. Intently into that oh, yeah. story. <laughs> this in is our, But you put another box up, was it in the close friends that you put Oh, my up, Lord. It? Yeah, there's two up. There's one for our Patreon. This one is the for first time I'm seeing this. Sorry. I uh, see it's all songs. That I can see, like yeah, I can't so click into the <laughs> click into the one. Fucking sorry, lads. Sorry, sorry, lads. 
Let me Would you like me to give you a tutorial on how to use your phone? Sound it. I'm in. Yeah. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I was having an argument with a guy I was speaking to and sent a 10 vid long rant about directly to him instead of my friend with no way to unsend. R.I.P. Fuck. Jesus. The unsend feature on WhatsApp and Snapchat has re- or and Instagram has really... Yes. And do you know what? It doesn't... Um, I don't think the Instagram... It used to notify you if somebody unsent a, fault, uh, unsent a DM to you. It used to be like, this message is no longer available because the sender deleted oh. it. Oh, yeah. Well, what a fucking script. Yeah, I know. But it doesn't... Ne- never gave you any details. And it was yeah. just like, all right, well, that's never going to be seen again. But it's telling me, so it's kind of giving me anxiety. Yeah. So this... It, it doesn't do it anymore. Yeah. I have, st- I have told this story before, but I can't remember if it was on this or Patreon. So I'm going to tell it again. Obviously, when me and Tom first started talking, we were on Snapchat as well. Mm. Um, and at one point we were messaging and I was messaging my, fel- my friend Paul at the same time. And I had no makeup on. Mm. My hair up with no greasy bun. Oh, I remember you I had spot cream, yeah. like as in pseudo cream, all over my face. Like a little Dalmatian. Like a little Dalmatian. And... He was, you know, you'd, instead of like texting, you take a photo and be like, have you got X, Y, and Z done? And he'd be like, no, were you looking? Because we were talking about college at that point. And I was yeah. like, no, blah, blah, blah. So he had, he had sent something, Paul had sent something to me. I replied back. Yeah. You know, triple chin situation. <laughs> yeah. That kind of gig. I used to love that. It was like sending in a gift, but it was your own face. It was your own face. And you just fire it back. And that was the thing to do on Snapchat. Yeah. Wasn't, like WhatsApp was a bit. It was a bit too structured Yeah For when you were younger um, And I adult. sent it to Tom instead And I didn't realise Until he replied being like What was that And I have never I lamped my phone Across the room yeah. And I started screaming Oh god Yeah And that You get it Because there was no Coming back from a Snapchat Yeah there yeah There was no coming back From a dodgy Snapchat Yeah um, We have one of our listeners here Who said I recently got banned from Snapchat Because a lad I worked with Reported me for bullying What? How was I bullying him? Do you know how? I didn't open his dick pics. Thanks, Connor. What? Yeah. I didn't open his dick pics. How do you get banned from Snapchat? Well, I assume Connor reported her for bullying and harassment, but surely you'd have to look into it now. Surely they could see what he's been sending. I mean, it's not a complete... Yeah, they can definitely see. Yeah. There's receipts somewhere. Surely they could means test that. Do you know? They'd have to. They'd have to, they'd have to figure something out. Banning is just seems a bit. It's a bit extreme. Yeah. yeah. Did people used to get banned off Snapchat? I think there was kind of, uh, there was, at one stage there was a like you got reprimanded and you weren't back allowed on for a few days. Uh, another listener here says, on lunch break in work, was replying to someone to tell him I was recently single, accidentally added to story. Aww. Back to work with a phone in break room, realised three hours later. It's a common trend uploading the wrong thing to your story it was so fucking easy to do it was so easy that to do. post a story button i feel like was in the firing line like it was very accessible it was too much and you do and but you'd be like come on come on come on come on upload so i can delete yeah, yeah. oh yeah because you couldn't do a fucking thing if it no. didn't you'd be like Mah. it was so simple but so complicated screaming absolutely lap, screaming. like yeah, yeah. um someone said as a 21 year old snapchat is still my main way of communicating and i hate it Really? Yeah. It is still for the younger people. For, the younger for some people. reason, people, uh, they tweet about it all the time when they're texting someone on Tinder and they're like, what's your Snapchat? And they're like, oh, sir. Oh, God. Sir, I am over the age of 24. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Wouldn't be for me. But it's also like, why do you want my Snapchat? Snapchat. I don't yeah. want to see. I feel like Snapchat's a red flag. If you're it asking for somebody. I don't want to see your dick. Stop. Yeah. I feel like if you're asking for somebody's snap, it's just such a red flag. Yeah, exactly. It is. It really is. Yeah, uh, yeah because you're not, there's no like way of anybody seeing who you're following. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. What's your snap? What's your snap? They're definitely like, in so a, many CD another things going life. On here. Yeah. yeah, different situation. Uh, posting a nude on your story meant for your boyfriend and texting your bestie to make sure it's gone. Yeah. Oh, good memories but also God, bad memories Jesus Christ um, someone said still mourning the day they got rid of being able to see other people's best friends it was yeah. good for a sneak yeah because you could only lie your way so much out of that Absolutely. but do you remember the chaos if you couldn't if their name on Snapchat wasn't similar to their name 
on Instagram and you couldn't figure out who they were or what they looked like. Oh, I hated it. No, that. just me. <laughs> no, but it was so, it was that, um, like, that's what I mean about people asking for your Snapchat because it, your Snapchat could be like fucking block of flats. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, 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 you were, there was no kind of verification process with Snapchat. It could be anything. Yeah. So random. And the blokes asking for your snap was probably called Yup the Flats. Do you know? Like yeah. you know, there was no way of knowing. Of knowing. Yeah, no, that's fair. Uh someone else said when you could see best friends, also everybody having sixty nine at the end of their name, including me yeah. at 50, including me at fifteen who had never experienced a sixty nine or knew what it was. Exactly. <laughs> sixty nine was just yeah, it was uh, it'd be like yeah. Lauren X sixty nine. Sixty nine. Just for what? And then it'd be Lauren underscore X69. Can you imagine in a club, what's your snap? Lauren X underscore 69. It's just, it was the way the world really was. It really then, was, you had to do it. Um, oh yeah, that person said that. Uh, I just, I don't know, look, uh, I'm a little bit, I'm a bit over it, but I do like going back in for it. Their filters are top tier. Absolute top tier. Miss it. Miss it. Have you got an unpopular opinion? <laughs> Episodes of shows where they go abroad. I hate They're them. always shite. <gasps> yes. They are, who asked us for that? It's like, do you know what? Episode six, they're going to be in Cannes. What? Yes. Always shite. Oh, oh, yeah. And I can't even remember what one I was looking at. And it happened. And I remember being like, this is shite. I already hate it. Yeah. I hate it. Stop. Give me the studio where they are in the same fucking room that we all know. Stop just, sending friends to London. Just stop. Stuff, you know, yeah. You know, I'm yeah. like, this is shite. This isn't the same drama. This isn't the same format. I don't like it. Yeah. Stop doing it. They can't be pulling the numbers from it. If you agree with me. That's two. That's two yeah. people. Yeah. And the minute you said it, I just... I, you I, felt it. I felt it. I felt, yeah. when, when you're watching an episode and you're like, Grant, I'm going to sit down to this now. And then you realise they're somewhere else. Like, It'd be like, Magaloof special. And you're like, no! <laughs> no. Hey, uh, hey. I don't even like when the fucking Kardashians go to that place. What's fucking Bar- Santa Barbara, is it? Uh, don't, Palm don't, Springs? Not where MJ lives. Or she oh, used to live. um, San Diego. No, she lived up in San Diego. No, well, that's where Chris was born. Where they I'm got wrong. fucking mar- engaged? Was it not Santa? Oh, Barbara? Santa Barbara. Was yeah. It? yeah, I used to hate when they went there. I was just like, stop. I'd be like, oh, it's this so episode's boring. about them in a different like- place. That's annoying. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, you wasted it though. I'm like, it's such a lazy episode because all the episode is is about them being in being in that place. That place. Yeah. And I'm like, that's not interesting. If I wanted to go to Key West, I would have went. Yeah. Yeah. It is lazy. It's definitely lazy. It's yeah, absolutely. It's the great, it's the best uh, explanation of it because they just make it their whole personality. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. there you go. Have you got a sample? I do. Carla's Stomper of the Week. It's green for Stomper. <laughs> I, this annoys me. Oh, well, I'm sorry. My table is, I'm sorry. My table Fuck is made by great. my dad. <laughs> sorry, my dad made my table. Um... So this is a blast from the past, but I think she's going to be a little pop star. All right. Here we go. Do you remember Rosie and Sophie who sang Super Bass on the Ellen yeah. Show? They both have singles out. How old are they now? 50, Rosie's 15. So it's Rosie's song that I'm going to play for you. So Rosie is 15 and Sophia is 18. Who was the louder one? Was that Rosie? Sophia was the older so, one. Sophia, yeah. There was right. the blonde and the brunette one. So Sophia was the blonde, or was the brunette one who was like, rah, rah, rah. Yeah. yeah. And then okay. Rosie was just kind of like, she was the little Tinkerbell kind of. Yeah. 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 The little one beside her. So she always reminded me of the little one out of uh, Matilda. So they're both after releasing music. Okay. Because they've gotten a big TikTok following by being like, remember these girls? This is me now. Oh, yeah. Um, And they're both gorgeous. Yeah. Okay. They're both fab. Um, okay. But I saw. Rosie's TikTok come up right and she was shooting her music video for it right and I was like this is a real this is a bop okay I was kind of like this is kind of like a bop now her she's still 15 so some of the lyrics the chorus is really good when she sings it's really good but when she kind of tries to you know do the talk sing it's not not great fantastic because she's still too young to be able to 
Yeah. It's not like singy enough. It's more like auto tuney. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it's called Safe in Your Love. And I just thought it was a very good pop song that's age appropriate. Okay. But nice. Nice. Yeah. Go for it. So I'm going to play it for you guys now. Let me just see if we are connected. We are indeed. I'm just going to skip. No, she doesn't smell like she's from Essie. But I also feel like if anybody had taken me seriously enough when I was younger thinking that I was going to be a pop star, like, you know, yeah, she's kind of after getting, that's why she's where she is now. It just, it was one of those. She is where she is now because she went viral on TikTok. Because obviously we've seen this whole thing with celebrities, but we're going to talk a little bit about that on the Patreon. So I don't want to delve in too much about uh, marketing and TikTok and what uh, records labels are now trying to do with their artists. So right. that's why it's because she stayed relevant. She stayed relevant with her TikTok and then used her TikTok to, to give her essentially a yeah. singing career. Well, fair play to it. It was never around in my day. Like, I feel like that's a family concert that went too far. <laughs> you know, like, family concert at Christmas. You and all your best cousins. Yeah, no, that's fair. Doing um, little concerts. No, that's fair. That's and fair. now look at her. No, no and it's a, good, it's a good tune and it's kind of, mm. there's something nostalgic about it and it's a nice arrangement and it's just a good pop tune, so. It's grand. Yeah. I wouldn't go as far as to say it's great. I think it's good. It's catchy and I've listened to it quite a bit. Right, okay. So, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I disagree. Um, Thanks a million for listening. Hope you enjoyed. We're going to go and record our Patreon now. Uh, we love you very much. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.